Oh, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Are you redeemed this morning? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. I've been drafting people and calling on people and for the last several weeks. I'm going to call on Sister Carly this morning. Oh, Jesus, may call on you. Praise the Lord. In a maybe, in a little bit, you might have something. Maybe. Oh, Jesus, praise the Lord. don't have much, nor do I really ever. I can't see over it. But I was praying this week, and uh, it was after I would normally minister on Tuesday night. And I was just praying, and I said something. Well, let me back up a little bit more. I think last week sometime I got a text from one of my uncles that I don't really talk to much at all. But he had found the Carly for Christ page. And I, I don't really go out of my way to tell people about it. I've never really told anyone about it. They just usually seem to somehow find it. But, and he had texted me, and he was just so blessed by it. And he was just so, I don't want to say amazed, but just so happy that he found it. And I was just in shock, because I've never talked to him about the Lord. And it's on my dad's side of the family, so we don't see him much, really. But I was just so blessed, and I was just so amazed that the Lord would put it in his path on his Facebook to just see my thing. And this morning, as I was just, as I was worshiping, I was just, God, it's so amazing that I've been given this commission, that I can be given words of life to someone else. And whenever he sent me that text, it just like hit me so heavy that I want to have something. I want to be ready in season and out of season. And I didn't know if I would have the scripture, but I opened up right up to it. Um... And it's in 2 Timothy chapter 2, and it says, chapter, I'm going to start verse 20, and it says, In a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. And I was just, and a lot of the things the Lord speaks to me are when I'm praying, but I was praying before ministering a couple weeks ago, and I just said, God, let me be overflowing. Let my vessel be one that you can use, that's meat for your use, but it's not just filled up. It's not just ready to be poured out, but it's just overflowing. There's so much to give. Let you be just pouring into me over and over and over. And I know it seems like such a message that I've probably given over and over and over, but just the water. Just that he would pour in and that it would be for someone else. Someone else needs it. And that was so heavy on my heart that he needed to see a message. I don't know what message he watched. I don't know what he saw. But I know that whatever the Lord placed on his page, it was for him to see. And it was so important to me that I be a vessel, that I have something in season and out of season. And Pop, I, I believe it was Pop or Keith ministered one time. And I had talked to him about it, and he was, I said, I want to be a vessel. And he was like, but you need to keep being filled, to keep being filled so that you are overflowing. You reach the brim, but there's so much more. His mercies are new. His riches are new, and it's unsearchable. And I know I don't have much, but it was just so heavy on my heart to exhort, to say, be a reflection of the Lord that when you go out, they look upon your face and they see Jesus. They don't see Carly, that they see Jesus. They see Jesus and something he's done for me. And as I was driving, I think it was yesterday or today, but I was just thinking of saying, because I was praying and I had said that, God, let me be a reflection of you. And when you're a reflection of something, you are that image. You have seen it and it is shown. And I just said, whenever I was praying, and I said, God, 
whenever someone meets a good, gets a good doctor and they fix whatever their ailment is, whatever they're sick of, they go out and they find someone else and someone says, I'm, I'm dealing with this. And if they were previously handling that, he says, oh, I've met this doctor, and he did exactly what I needed. He can do it exactly for you. And why aren't we as, as children of God like that? I've met a great physician, and he's able to save you from what is from that sin, that deep darkness, that despair. He's able to save. I've met a great physician. Go and see him. He doesn't have to. You don't have to make, you don't have to do something to get in to him. But he's right there. Go and be saved. But I want to be that one. And that is filled to overflowing. And that song that says, broken and spilled out. Let me be broken and spilled out and used up for him. A vessel that is meet for his use. That he's glorified. That he's very apparent. Because there are souls that are needing to be saved. That are longing to find something. To find life. And Pop ministered a message on Wednesday night. And he said, the devil isn't trying to win those souls. But we are. Because the devil's already got them. If a soul in sin is to die today, the devil's already got them. They're going to hell. But we are to go out and to be filled with the Spirit of God and to be overflowing for their sake, that he be glorified and that they may come to know him, that they may meet the great physician, the one that can heal them from all sin, all uncleanness, and make them whole and make them new and, and living creatures. How wonderful is that? But... I don't have much, but really just to exhort you to be filled to overflowing, to go out. And there's a song that says, I've seen you in the face of a stranger on the street. And every time I read, I hear that, I'm like, I want that to be me. I want a stranger to look at me and say, there's life in them. There's something different in them. Not that I've made, not that I did. Moses didn't fa make his face to shine, but God did because he had spent time with God. He had gone and been with the Father. And if we go and be with the Father, there's something different. There's a sweet-smelling savor about the people of God. They can smell it. They can see it. They can know, and they can go, and they can say they have comfort. They have rest, and I want to go and be where they are. There's a place of rest for them, and we are just to be invitations. We're just to be reflections of it, telling them, Come, come ye that are thirsty. Come ye that cannot find what you're searching, searching for. Because it's been completed for you. It's been finished on the cross. Not something you have to make or do. Not something you have to work for. But it's been finished for you upon the cross. And, we, and I just want to take that commission not ever lightly. I never want to count it as common. I never want to say, well, I go to church on Sunday and I minister on Tuesday nights. And something Keith and I have talked about is that my ministry isn't just Tuesday nights. But my ministry is the time I spend on my knees. My ministry is the time I spend speaking with the Father and saying, God, I need something for that soul. Maybe it just be one, but that one soul, is blood, it was blood was shed for. But that one soul is longing to be saved, and they need to hear something. And God, give me what they need to be here to, to hear and fill me to overflowing with it. And that's really all I have, but just to be exhorted, to be encouraged because there are souls longing to be saved. Thank you, Jesus. She has to Brother Surface had a song. Brother Surface did, either didn't hear me or he's not he's not listening. Yes. Well, come sing it. Come sing it. It's just a chorus. Come sing a chorus. No, you can't do it from there. This is the way drafting works. If y'all never lived in a period of a draft. Uh, 
I hadn't heard this song in many, many, many years. In fact, nobody in the church had ever heard it when I sang it a couple of weeks ago, just the chorus. But I woke up, sang with it in my heart, I don't know, a week ago, a little over. But I didn't tell this, but I knew at that time that it was for Brother Pillow. I didn't know that he was going to pass this, you know, last night. I didn't know that. I'd hoped that uh, that he would come through and have several more years with us. But at 89 years of age, he lived a, a full life, a good life, was a blessing to so many. And and even knowing the possibility of it coming, I was shocked at the words I heard that he had passed. Was it last night? This morning? But no question, a great man of God, no question about that precious Savior. So far better off is he than we that remain. If there's any question whatsoever about our soul, praise God. But what I woke up in my heart was just simply those words. When I walk up the streets of gold, when I walk up the streets of gold, how my heart will rejoice in that morning when I walk up those streets of gold. When I walk up the streets of gold, when I walk up the streets of gold, how my heart will rejoice in that morning when I walk up those streets of gold. Praise God. And I can tell you, that there's a homesickness because that's home. That's home for me, precious Savior. Hallelujah. Precious Savior. There's men of God throughout the Bible that became more at home in the presence of God than they were in the presence of men. Moses got more at home in the presence of God than in the presence of men. And from that time, he had to wear a veil over his face in the presence of men, but he could take it off in the presence of God. Men couldn't bear to look upon his countenance because he'd been with God. Two great greatest men in the Bible that I know Moses in the Old Testament said, Show me thy way that I may know thee, precious Savior. And Paul said, he said, I suffer the loss of all things and do be count, count them but dung, that I may win Christ, that I may be found in Christ, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Precious Savior, do you know him? Do you know him today? That's what counts. Do you know him? Hallelujah. Precious Savior. Precious Savior. This is... Life eternal, John said, that we know Him, the true God, and Jesus Christ, His Son, precious Savior. Pastor. Well, glory. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. want to express thanks to... All those that helped us yesterday on book day, and uh, uh, so we got a new book going out, uh, and you know, just the work of the Lord is ever before us; it's never behind us. Another book day and a couple Saturdays, two Saturdays. Amen. I believe they're gathering the toddlers. Any, to any toddlers going to? 
going to toddler class. Amen. We're getting more and more. That's good. Praise the Lord. Uh, Lindsay, that's that's Robin's daughter, uh, uh, gave birth to, was it Roman? Ronan. Ronan. Okay. And uh, was it yesterday? Yesterday, it's a little, little boy. And uh, praise the Lord. Jesus spoke. Of course, he, he spoke as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the 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 coming of the Son of Man. He said they'll be eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. So I assume that means in having children too. And uh, that's part of it. And he wasn't saying that that was anything bad. He said that life will be going on. Life will be going on. Uh, I've, I've heard those many times in my life that no, this is not the time to uh, to get married. Now, There's some of them I told wasn't the time to get married, but uh, but I'm just talking about it, it married or, or having children. Or going, no, no, you know Jesus said that's the way it will be. That's what you know, all the way up to the coming of the Son of Man. So thankful for all these uh, young members. Praise the Lord. I'm going to to briefly this morning. Thank you, Carly, for for sharing and. <clears throat> And it just really about ministry, and that that key to ministry is really that that the Lord fill you up. You, know, you you give what you have. You can't give what you do not have. And when you try to give something that you not have, have really that's what's called pretense. You know, it's your you know those that that. That they're not right, but they're trying to to tell people, you know, that that's pretense. That's, and we're not going to dive off into all that this morning. But you get and you seek the Lord to ever fill you, ever fill you. That's that's ministry. A minister, a minister, and that says, well, you know, God called me and ignored me and He used me, and and sits down and and rest on that or trust in that will soon be be dried up and wondering and everybody else wondering with them if God ever called them, if God ever called them. Because it's not just that you're a vessel. You can be an empty vessel. But take that empty vessel to the Lord and continually because if you're giving, then that vessel needs to be filled. If you're drinking, that vessel needs to be filled continually. There's just a couple brief uh, passages on my heart this morning. First in John, the 20th chapter. And it is, to, to me, it's an, it's an important um, understanding for, for ministry. And Jesus has uh, been raised from the dead, appeared to... To Mary appeared to Peter appeared uh, to the disciples and finally he appears to the disciples again with Thomas and, and Thomas is the one that said said you know unless I, I what put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side I will not believe you know he's he's heard of the resurrection all of the the disciples were, were heartbroken, dismayed, and uh, and none of them believed the first report that they heard that Jesus was risen. We give Thomas a, a rough time. Uh, but Peter didn't believe when he was told. You know, the disciples didn't believe they were t when they were told. None of them believed when they were first told. And Jesus had to appear and had to show himself. And I'll say this to you, is you've got a sincere heart, the Lord will reveal himself to you. If you've got a sense, if you're just a, 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 just a doubt and a skeptic, he, he won't have anything to do. But if you've got a sincere heart, 
and a reaching out. Lord, I want to know. I want to know. Uh, he'll reveal himself to you. Well, he appeared to Thomas in a 27th, uh, 26th verse of, of John 20. And after eight days, again, his disciples were within. And Thomas with them then came to Jesus. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither your finger and behold my hands. And he was saying, Thomas, Thomas, if you want to, take your finger, like you said, and, and, and put it in the prints. Put it in the nail prints in my hands. And reach hither your hand. And he's saying, reach right here. And so hither is here. He's, he's saying, I can see Jesus. He's standing there. He said, Thomas, right here. Right here. Reach your hand. Reach your hand and put it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because you have seen, you have believed. Blessed are, the, are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And to this point, that's been no, no one. To this point, but many will believe. Many will believe. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. And this is the book we call the Gospel of John. Uh, and to me, one of the most precious books in the Bible, I, I would say they're all precious, but but one of the most precious books in the Bible. I love, I love the Gospel of John. I, there's life in it. And if there's a young Christian, you say, what should I read? Read John. Read John. Some, and others say, well, read Matthew. Read it. You read others, you get history sometimes. You read John, you get life. And there's life in it. And you don't even, it's not even just the, what you figure out. It's just that there's something about and that and that's the reason and John wrote and he said he said many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written that you may believe what that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. And he, he gives the, the reason that he wrote the things that he wrote in this, this book, and I think John did very well in that purpose. The, 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 the way he wrote First John, the, the things, he takes a different course than the other writers. But he says, I'm writing these that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. How do you receive life? You believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. You believe that. And, and we're going to, to speak of that in a little, but I want to take a, a contrasting passage in the same writer, and it's First John, the fifth chapter. And uh, we'll begin re reading in the 11th verse. This is the record. And this is John writing also. Now, uh, but this epistle is totally different and written for a different reason, written for a different purpose. And, and it's, not, it's important for us to understand, and I believe it's important for, for the gospel minister to understand. It's a different purpose. For, John was written so that those that read it, heard it, would believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and believing they would have life. It's a, it's a letter written to lost people. It's a letter written to people that not believed yet, that not heard 
And if they would believe on the Son of God, they would have life. But here he says, this is the record that God has given to us. As God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He's actually saying the witness or the evidence, and it's strange how in this same chapter uh, one word would be translated three different ways, but the word actually means evidence. The evidence that God has given to us is eternal life. The life that John said you'll receive if you believe uh, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. If you believe upon Him, you'll receive this. So John's talking to those. He says that you've received that evidence in you. Sister Carly uh, mentioned, you know, uh, about that desire that, that, that her, her face shine. And I, I believe that uh, that should be the, the desire of every child of God. I'm not talking about some physical glow, but that, that Christ be seen. That Christ be manifest. But I'll tell you one thing is, your, is that'll never be if you're going out about trying to figure out how to do things to make your face shine. That's not how it happened to Moses, is it? It happened to Moses because he was in the presence of God. He, and, if, and, and Moses didn't have a thought about his face shine, and that wasn't. Moses come down to the scripture and said he didn't even know. But he'd been in the presence of God. And you walk with the Lord and you abide in his presence. And that thing that you may not even be aware of, others will be aware of. But I've seen those that set about in, in, in you know, a hundred different ways to make sure people saw what they are. And people saw what they were. But it wasn't thought what they wanted them to see. You forget about people seeing what you are. You forget about that, and you set your face and your heart and your love upon the Lord. And people will begin to note that you've been with the Lord. They'll begin to note the Lord as you abide in His presence. But here John writes, He that has the Son has life. It's the only way to have life. It's the only way to receive life. O only... You, you, you must have the Son. He that has not the Son has not life. If you don't have the Son, you don't have life. It doesn't matter how good, how religious, how, how uh, uh, honest. If you don't have the Son, you don't have life. These things have I written unto you. And again, it's like John starts to close this letter. These things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Can you see the difference there? One gospel is written so that you may believe, so that you will believe. One letter is written. This letter is written on those that do believe, that, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. This is a letter of confirmation, of confirming the saints, of confirming those that know the Lord. It's a letter of confirmation. And then he says this, it sounds strange, that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. I was just looking for service. There's actually no word for, for may there. And I, I believe what he's saying, and it would make sense what he's saying, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you believe on the name of the Son of God. You may know that. It's confirming. It's that you can be sure. And so there's, there's, there's two different books here written by the same apostle that are serving two different purposes. And it's important for us to understand and to recognize. And, and we may love both books, but... You know, the, the message of 1 John is, is proofs whereby you may know. And that's what John said I wrote this for, that you may know that you believe on the name of the Son of God. It wasn't proofs that the lost may know that they believe on the name of the Son of God. It wasn't proofs that the unbeliever may know 
It wasn't even, a, and I want to say this, proves that they, if they know this, that they'll have life. He speaks about he that loves know, knows God. He that loves not knows not God. That, that, you need to know that. But you know you can tell that to somebody, and, and that's not going to give them life. You can tell them those that love know God, those that don't love don't know God. That's not going to give them life. The scripture, John will say something else. He's saying, he that uh, is born of God does not commit sin. I believe that. The word of God says that over and over and over again. And he says, he that commits sin is of the devil. That's true. Absolutely true. You need to know that. You need to understand that. But do you know you can tell someone that, and that won't give them life. That won't... My, that they, there are people that have believed that for all times. Jesus spoke, Jesus spoke to the Jews in his day. He said, if I had not spoken unto them, they had not had sin. They didn't believe that the people of God were sinners. They didn't believe that the people of God committed sin. They would stone those that they believed committed sin. They would uh, ostracize them. They would cast them out. And yet Jesus told them, if you won't believe on me, you'll die in your sins. You'll, with all your self-righteousness, you'll die in your sins. You'll die in that, in that darkness. I uh, have seen in my life, in my ministry, those uh, that are hard, hard against sin and hard against uncleanness but uh, they have no answer they have nothing that can change the heart of those that hear them all they can say is uh, well if you was God you wouldn't do this or if you was a Christian you wouldn't do this or if you was holy you wouldn't do this or if you were you know and, and such because the people of God don't do this well that's true but that won't give anyone life. Am I making any sense this morning? He's, he's writing that to confirm those uh, that know God, that have life. And there was a reason for that. It was needed then and it's needed now. Because there were those that had come in and corrupted the gospel. They'd come in and corrupted what it meant to, to have eternal life. They'd corrupted the grace of God. They'd, they'd, they'd corrupted, you know, that, that this, well, you have life, I suppose, means uh, oh, you're, you're going to heaven, even though you're, you're ungodly and, and, and these things work in your heart. And so John starts uh, this epistle that first John, he said, life was manifested and we have seen it. We know what life is. It's not uncleanness. It's not uh, darkness it's not iniquity there's no darkness in God at all we've seen what life is we handled life we touched life but he's writing to confirm the saints the the the, the children of God and saying you know the difference you need to remember the difference you need to understand the difference but the gospel of John is different in tone. And there's a reason for that. He's not... Uh, uh, our mission as ministers of the gospel is not to go out and convince someone that they're of the devil. I want you to hear that. That's not our mission. And I've seen those, I've seen those that have come out of this church that have taken that as their mission. They're, it seems like their entire testimony is, you know, and witness to people is ultimately to prove to them that they don't have anything. Well, let me say as pastor of this church, I don't agree with that. 
I don't agree with that. I've had those that say, and I want to say this. Who was it? I didn't know who, remember who it was that asked me the question. Well, if someone doesn't see what you say, they, they can't be lost. They can't be saved. And I said, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Salvation is in a Savior. I want you to hear that. Salvation is in a Savior. Jesus the Christ. And in preaching Jesus the Christ, we must tell them what it means that He's the Christ. We must tell them what he came to do. We must tell them that he wrought it upon the cross. But our purpose and our ministry and our mission is, must be to that one point that, that they would believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of of God and that they believe in that believing they might have life I'm not going to take the time this morning to go through first John it's amazing that almost every chapter of John not first John Jesus gives the promise of life that whosoever believeth in him might have life. I'm come that you might have life. And the he that believeth on the Son of God hath life. And and I'm not going to go through all all those those those, those chapters, but I do want to read in the first chapter of First John. The first chapter of John, I'm sorry. In the fourth verse, third verse says, All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of this and the light was the light of men the light shone in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not there was a man sent from god whose name was john the same came for a witness to bear witness of that light that all men through him might believe he was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light that was the true light which lighteth every man that comes into the world. He was in the world. The world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, the children of God, the sons and the daughters of God. And who did he give that a power or that privilege to be the sons of God? He says, even to them which believe upon his name. And so the, the power, don't you hear, the power that causes you to be the son of God is to those that believe upon his name. And he says this, which are born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And I want you to see this. John speaks of Jesus. He said, we saw his glory as the only begotten of the Father. And... Of course, he's the only begotten from the mother's womb, but he was the only begotten to this point also. 
And you say, well, what do you mean? There's others born of God. Are you born of God? And how many have been born again? You say, I'm born again. Then in that respect, Jesus is no longer the only begotten. In that respect, he's the only begotten that will ever be from a, from a mother's womb. Only begotten, the Lord from heaven, made flesh, conceived of a virgin. And it, 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 Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, always will ever be the only begotten in that respect. But uh, not uh, in the respect of being the children of God. The scripture says uh, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. You and I, you and I, and those that will believe upon his name. But he describes this only begotten. He says he's full of grace and truth. I want to tell you, Sister Carly, what makes a person's face shine in the Lord. It's when they're full of grace and truth. It's when they've been in the presence of God. And God has graced them with Christ. And He's graced them in His presence and in His goodness. And it, and it causes it to shine forth. He was full of grace and truth. And they've said, we've never seen anyone like this. We've never seen this. Not in the Pharisees. Not in the priests. Not in the, you know, uh, the, the, the great religious leaders. This is the only only one we've seen like that but I want to tell you he is not today not the only begotten in the respect of being the children of God and this is what John says in 1 John we saw what life is we saw what life is life is not that you've made some confession that you've shook at a preacher's hands that you went into a baptismal that you go to church that's not uh, what life is uh, life uh, is what he was full of and he'll tell us two verses later of, of his fullness if we received uh, grace for grace uh, the children of god have the life uh, that was in the only begotten son of god and that's life. So he's, when he says that you might have life, he's not saying so that you can just go to heaven, so that you can have what Jesus was full of. And he begins building upon this uh, chapter after chapter. Let me do what I told you I wasn't going to do. Uh, the third chapter, if you believe on him, you might have life. Fourth chapter says, said, I'll be a well of water springing up into what? Everlasting life. He said, fifth chapter, Jesus says this. He says, the hour is coming that the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. They that hear shall live. See, he's building upon that promise. Uh, uh, that's the fifth chapter. The sixth chapter, he said, I am the bread of life. He that eats me will what? Will live. He that eats me, he said, the words that I speak are spirit and life. It's the spirit that quickens. And he's building on that promise of life that he'll give to everyone that will believe upon Him and trust in Him. I could go on through this uh, chapter after chapter. And I was amazed at how many, what is it, the 10th the, the chapter. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I've come that you might have life. And when you look at it, He's come that you might be filled with what I'm full of. I want you to, when I say life, I want you to hear that, that you might be filled with what I'm full of. He, of his fullness have all we received in grace for grace. And, and Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes under the Father except by me. And I want to tell you this, in preaching the gospel, 
in preaching the gospel, we must preach the whole counsel of God. But we must not forget that He is the way, the truth, and the life. And they must understand that the things promised in the gospel are not something you do, are not something you work for, are not something you obtain through any fleshly means, but it's through believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ, trusting in Him. I was reminded something just a few minutes ago, and it caused me to lose track, Brother Surface. We were in a camp meeting. This is, I'm sure this has been 25 years ago down in Rock Island. And Brother Surface took the pulpit. And there was a lot of tension in the place. I don't think this was the night, but we was in one service. The preacher that closed out the service before had a word from God for the people. He had to come back and give a word from God. He says, I got to leave tonight, but if someone gets up here in the morning and preaches anything negative, turn him off. Did you do that, Brother Surface? Turn him off if he says anything negative about anything. Turn him off. God's not the God of negative. I said, who's he talking about? Brother Surface gets up the next morning, his first words. He says, I got to tell you folks, I'm a negative preacher. He says, you take the negative cable off your car, it's not going to start. You take the negative out of the gospel, you don't have the power to convict a soul. But he got up this service and he said, I may not be perfect. Amen. I'm just going, he's not starting with, I'm a negative preacher. He says, I may not be perfect. But I once was. And I go, oh, Lord. How are you going to get out of this one, Pops? He said, in the day that I was born of the Spirit of God, he did a complete work, and I was complete. And if I'm not today, it's not his fault. It's mine. Is that pretty much? And so I said, I don't understand that. Salvation never comes incomplete. Salvation is salvation. A new creation is a new creation. Now I've got to ask Brother Surface, did you know the height and the depth and the length and the breadth, the riches of the gospel of Christ in that hour? No. It wasn't, did you know that a child of God does not commit sin? He didn't believe Christians were sinners. Did you know, you know, that that you know that all the things that we preached in the gospel, he was he, yes, he'd grown up in the church. He had been a, a youth leader before he was saved. You say that's a shame. Yeah, it's also pretty normal. There's much he didn't know. There's much he didn't understand. There's much that if he did, had of understand, there's snares he could have avoided. There's traps uh, that he would not uh, step in. Perhaps he would be, could be able to stand here this morning and say, I've never got away from God. I, I'm sure he would love to, to be able to say that. It breaks his heart to, to have to say that. That the, through the knowledge of the truth, 
through the knowledge of the truth, avoid the snares and the, and the struggles of darkness. But without all that understanding, he received life. I remember the day was it 38, seven years ago? Just a few weeks past. That I knelt to the front pew of a church. I've told you probably a hundred times I didn't know up from down. Didn't know right from left. You ever seen a mess in your life? He was kneeling there. I'd been raised in church. I knew the Bible stories. I thought I knew everything until I discovered I knew nothing. And in that day, you know what I'm telling the Lord? Help me. Help me. I didn't know I'd be preaching the gospel. I didn't know uh, I'd be writing newsletters. I didn't know uh, the, 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 the riches uh, that the Lord would reveal. And if someone had told me, I wouldn't have believed them. But I knew I needed Jesus. And I knew that He was my only answer. And He came to me just like He came to so many of you. And what did he give you? Life. And that life revolutionized your existence. You say, how do you know? I, I told you, if it was life, it did. I'm not here to back away from preaching the, the, the height and the depths and the breadths of the gospel of Christ because we live in a day like John lived out his old age in where they corrupted the gospel and people don't know what life is. People don't know, as John could say, that this is what a child of God is. That's not a child of God. That tell us that we're all unrighteous, we're all sinners. And John says, said, no, wait a minute. That's not, what, that's not what we saw, no. He that commits sins of the devil. People cringe when you hear, say, well, well John cringed when he heard that, when they said they were of God. People say, what, what is better in the church house? To say what John says, he that sins is of the devil, or to say that well, those that are sin are of God, that made John cringe. That made... And that's why he writes that letter. No, that's not it. But we, and we've got so many ministers in this place, and so many want to be... A witness. Seek God for the words to show them that Jesus is the Christ. And you'll have to tell them what it means that he's the Christ. He's the Son of God that takes away the sin of the world. So that those that will believe will have life. 
don't know if this makes any sense to anyone but me this morning. Sister Hope, come help us this morning. Word of God says, Paul wrote, he said, the letter kills, the spirit gives life. I want, for me, I want for every minister, for every witness, God give us words that give life. Brother Tom caught me Wednesday. Can I share that, Brother Tom? I got up last Sunday morning and I shared that dream that I had Sunday morning. Remember that? I said I was around very religious people. I didn't know them, but all looked good. And then someone spoke up and his sister somebody said she threw a devil's fit yesterday and I said this and I believe you were here you remember what I said I said I didn't know in the dream if she was down on the floor convulsing shaking like a demon or cursing someone one out is that what I said or cursing someone I said I didn't know I didn't know in the dream I said, but, but she's all right because the day she was in the spirit. And I spoke up in the dream and I said, if she was throwing a devil's fit yesterday and in the spirit today, it's the wrong spirit. I remember that. Brother Tom caught me. Was it Wednesday, Brother Tom? He said, tell me that dream. I said, what dream? I told y'all Sunday morning. I said, I don't know why I'm telling this. He said his sister was with him last Sunday morning. First thing he said about my sister, he said, he says, he said, Lord saved her. I mean, she's had a life that's had some major, major, you know, I'm going to say ups and downs. That was anything but a child of God. The Lord saved her. He began to tell me that the, that the things that were transformed in her life, that everything. But he said now she's getting pushed aside out of her church. She's a piano player. She's getting pushed aside because what she says, what she tells about what the Lord's done. I've heard that before. Jeff, you watching? Jeff got saved and became the whole mission of the church he was in to convince him God don't do that. I mean, he spends 25 years in bitterness and bitterness and, and, and anger and alcohol and and all the different things and, uh, and and an absentee father and things like that and then in a hospital room when his son's life is at stake he calls upon the Lord and the Lord saves him and transforms him and the church's mission be became convince him that God don't do that. He don't take your sin away. He doesn't take it out of your heart. He doesn't take away the alcohol. He doesn't take away. Doesn't convince him of that. And Tom's sister, he said, began to get sidelined and pushed out. Well, which church she get saved in? I think she got saved in the presence of God somewhere. But Tom told me this I said why about that dream he said well I didn't know this but her pastor was a, a, a woman 
but she told me, said, my pastor cursed me out. And then the next Sunday, she's up there all spiritual. What did I say in that dream? If she threw a devil's fit yesterday and is in the spirit today, it's the wrong spirit. But that doesn't stop your sister from having life. They may try to take it away, and she needs to hear the words of truth, the words of life. You know where God saves people? I can tell you where. I know where. Wherever he saves them. Wherever he saves them. He saved one fella laying on the road, old dirt road heading to Damascus. He saved another fella in a chariot. Wherever he saved. And wherever they are, we give them Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God. He takes away the sin of the world. See, it has always been Jesus. And it will always be Jesus. Give me those words, Lord. See, I was reading this morning what Jesus said. He said, if you eat me, I'm the bread of life. If you eat me, you'll have life. And they were upset. He said, it's the spirit that quickens, that gives life, that makes alive. The flesh profits nothing. I'm not going to preach an ordinance. I'm not going to preach a ritual. I'm not going to preach a ceremony. He says, the flesh profits nothing. Well, tell him it's Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God. He died for you. He shed his blood to wash us from our sins. Trust him. And Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Lord, give me those words. I did something I didn't want to do this morning. I said I'm not going to take much of your time. And I didn't want to do that this morning. Because just like Paul said, he said, I'd rather speak, was it five words in a language they understand? Rather than 10,000 in an unknown tongue? I'd rather speak a few sentences. And Honestly, I can't do that. You figured that out. But I'd rather speak just a, a few words.
that would be spirit and life. Carly, don't ever feel bad. You say, I've only got five minutes. Well, don't ever feel bad about five minutes. If it's five minutes the Lord gives you, say, God, in those five minutes, reach into a heart and cause them to believe upon the name of the Son of God. Oh, Jesus. Let's stand this morning. Oh, Jesus. We gather. You gather with me. Lord, give me those words of life. Give me those words of life. Oh, Jesus. And not every ministry in this place is going to be the same, and it shouldn't be. God's given Brother Surface of ministry of searching out the things that have been hidden. I know that. I don't say that for his sake. I know that. But I believe, and maybe I miss it, but I believe that God's given me a ministry of seeking to take those things that are revealed. And God, give me simple words. Give me words that they can understand. Because at the end of the day, I want them to understand. I want them to hear. I want them to know. And brother, your ministry will be different. Understand that. That's all right. But let all of us say, but Lord, give us the words of life. Give us those words. Oh, Father. Lord, we're a church full of ministers. So many ministers in so many different ways in this place. I thank you for that. Lord, give us the words of life. Lord, to speak. Lord, with grace and by your Spirit to make known the things of Christ. Lord, words. Lord, that will sow the seed. Lord, in one day gather a harvest. I thank you. Oh, I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, I thank you, Lord Jesus.